Hey everybody, uh, welcome. I'm just getting uh, fin- well, getting set up, finishing my setup here. Hey everybody, uh, if welcome. you can I'm hear getting, me, uh, fin- well, uh, please say so, <laughs> so that I know that my audio is working. I would appreciate that. Hey everybody, uh, if welcome. you can hear me, uh, please say so, <laughs> so that I know that my audio is working. I would appreciate that. Hey everybody, uh, if you can hear me. Oh. Mr. Raccoon, hello. <laughs> right, uh, is everything working? Coming through? Can you hear me? Can you hear the guitar? Right, uh, is everything got, uh, coming through? Can you hear me? Can you hear the guitar? <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Anton Evaristo, Procyon. I've got. Uh, Oh man, it's a delay. I knew it. Hold hello, on. Hello, um, hello. Anton Evaristo, Procyon. Oh man, it's a delay. I knew it. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, is the is the echo in my voice or the guitar? Oh man, delay. I knew it. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, is the is the echo in my voice or the guitar? Hold on. Wait, is the, is the echo in my voice or the guitar? F. Well, let's see. Hold on. Wait, is the, is the... F. Both. Well, Someone says both. So I just switched the microphone uh, to my computer, which means my voice is probably going to sound like garbage. But let's see if that takes care of the echo. Well, Someone says both. So I just switched the microphone. Uh, to my computer, which means my voice is probably going to sound like garbage. But let's see if that takes care of the echo. Someone says both. So I just switched the microphone uh, to my computer, which means my voice is probably going to sound like garbage. But let's see if that didn't takes work. The echo. Shit. What about now? So I, I the problem is that I'm trying to run two different sound systems, uh, and when it comes through, I hear it fine, but there's a problem when it actually plays on YouTube. Oh, you know what? Okay, so I think I know what the problem is. I think I fixed it. So hopefully this microphone is working and you can hear me and there's no weird echo. <laughs> okay, so, okay, it's working, good. So here's the, here's the deal. So I, I I'm totally doing exactly what I would never recommend anybody to do. I'm testing out a new camera. I'm running, I'm trying to run Amplitude and Logic through my system audio so that when I play this, you can actually hear it uh, amplified. And then I just had too many things turned on uh, for it to work correctly. So, okay, I think we're gonna be good to go. Let me see if this works. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk and play a little bit. Um, So hopefully now you can hear me, you can hear the guitar. There's no crappy echo going on and I'm not completely jacking this up. Cheers. All right, uh, I'm excited for this. Uh, this should be fun, I hope. For everybody, let me go through because I've been <coughs> panicking about my sound. Uh, just make sure that I say hi to everybody. Uh, let's see. Winnipeg? Wow. Canada. I like Canada. Matt's here. Hey, Matt. Josh. Hello. White Rhino from, yeah, Winnipeg. That's cool. Nate is late. Whatever. You didn't miss anything other than me screwing up a live stream, basically. Josh is in New York City. All right. I'm in Boston-ish, north of Boston. I know we have somebody from 
uh, the UK, Procyon Lotor, their raccoon, which I probably didn't pronounce right. Someone commented on one of my uh, videos that I did on the Jazz Strat about how cringe my um, French was. And I was like, yes, I, I don't speak French, so it should be terrible. That was, that was the point. Okay, today, um, tonight, where are we from? Matt's from Pennsylvania. Oh, I've driven through Pennsylvania quite a few times. It's really pretty. More New Yorkers, New York. Oh, good. Then we can both now pronounce it together. Um, so what I want to do uh, today is I'm going to walk through uh, the two new Epiphone models. If you don't care about that, that's completely fine. Uh, what I really want to do is uh, I'm just going to play a little bit, which makes me super nervous. Like I don't like playing in front of people at all. Um, so it's going to be simple and very mediocre. But what I would like to do is just be able to play a little bit of both of them so that you can hear, um, because this one has, you know, the single P90 and then this, the Crestwood that I just got in obviously has two mini humbuckers and I haven't even taken the plastic off yet. So what I want to do is just sort of answer questions anybody has, because sometimes, you know, if I make a video on one, I don't necessarily know what you want to know about the guitar. Uh, so if it's anything from, you know, how do they play? What is the neck feel like? Can you you know, play something with a bunch of fuzz, <laughs> like I'll take requests, uh, and do us whatever. Uh, just picture you naked. Heard that works with performance anxiety. It does, unless my anxiety is due to your nudity. <laughs> I'm even having a beer, which I, I, I don't drink very often, but like I said, one, I get a little bit nervous on live streams. Two, I get really nervous playing in front of people. So this is my worst nightmare. Are they on loan or did I purchase them? I purchased them. I got this one from Sweetwater and I got the Crestwood Custom from Musician's Friend because Sweetwater was sold out of them and that was the only way that I could get one in stock. So <laughs> play some Weezer. I used to know the sweater song. Um, what was that? Is that it? Something like that. I love the sweater song. That blue album was amazing. That was one of my favorites ever. So yeah, honestly, this this whole thing is kind of the, kind of uh, for you. So if there's anything you want to know, if if you're like, look, we don't care about those guitars, go play your Tele or your Flying V or whatever. Like I'll grab those too. I don't care. Um, so yeah, this is just fun. I have an hour to do this. I have my pizza dough, very carefully rising right now, so that I can make a pizza tonight. I'm excited. Um, anybody cook? Anybody like to cook? I love to cook, so mostly dessert, but I do. Li I like to cook. Uh, Josh says, "How is the fit and finish?" Um, I would say su surprisingly good on both of them. The um, I was going to do a video comparing like Sweetwater versus Musician's Friend, but honestly, they both came really quite well. I, I do think the Crestwood is probably set up a little bit nicer. Um, if we were supposed to be hearing amplitude, it's not coming through. No, not yet. Um, I don't have, hold on. If I, I have it off right now, but I'll, I'll turn it on. Wait. So hopefully that comes through. So right now I just have it on a clean channel, but uh, fit and finish. The frets are really not good. They're, they're, they're pretty sharp and jagged. They're worse. Uh, definitely on the coronet than the Crestwood. I think the Crestwood is actually set up a little bit nicer um, than this one. But overall, you know, there's no major flaws or anything. And, you know, these poly finishes, they're very thick, so they, they cover a lot of flaws. Um, but there's no, like, weird overspray. The nut looks pretty good. Um, yeah, I think they're they're the fit and finish on these is good. I'll grab... Um, Actually, I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to try to do like a bunch of different things at once, so just bear with me. Uh, and this is the Crestwood. This one actually, you know, I don't totally know if this is, but this is more of like a clear, so it's got like a, a two-piece body with actually like some, can you see that? 
with like some like nice figuring on it. It's actually a really pretty guitar. And it comes through, it comes around the front, but all the, the controls are kind of in the way. But you can sort of see the, the stripies and the wood there. And it's not like a veneer. It goes all the way through. So this is a, it's a beautiful guitar. Um, really, really nice. I like it. Uh, is the neck more round or flat feeling on the back? This, um, it feels to me like a slightly, a slightly wider slim taper neck on a Gibson, um, if that makes any kind of sense at all. Um, they are, I met, I actually, I measured the coronet. It's, it's 0.8 at the first fret and almost an inch at the 12th fret, but it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like that. Like my, um, my Les Paul special feels much more like rounder. It's got like a much more rounded neck and where this has sort of that, that medium C type of shape and like the nut with that thing is like 1.69. So it's a little bit wider, um, but not nearly as deep. Um, and it's got a pretty good taper on it. So I don't know if that helps or not, but are they keepers or will you be moving them on? Um, I'll probably be moving them on, but that's not, you know, that's not here or there really because I move most of them on. Um, like I have my Tele and my Les Paul special, and those are my take to my grave guitars kind of a thing. And the rest of them, um, I just like to explore and try them and it's fun and I love guitars and they're so cool just to get your hands on and try them, but I don't have any intention of keeping any of them. Um, so they probably won't stick around. How's the tuning stability on the bridge? Honestly, like I got this in uh, last night. I have played it a little bit. Um, I will say it does surprisingly well. Um, and I'll, I'll plug it in here a second and check and see if it's still in tune. Maybe it's not, I don't know. Um, but it hasn't done very much. And I'm not like a trem user, like hardly at all. Um, and especially like big speeds. This one actually works really, really well. I just, I'm not a big, I don't grab trems and start wanking on them. It's not my thing. Um, did I keep the PRS CE24? Nope, I did not. I sold it. Fantastic, amazing guitar, fantastic. Uh, but no. So I think what I'll do, and hopefully this works. The problem is, is I can't hear what my guitar is doing without headphones. So let me, um, let me do this just to make sure I can. Yeah, okay. Uh, Matthew says, I always keep my guitars until they break. I'm with you, uh, but it's hard to do a guitar YouTube channel with two guitars. <laughs> especially since I don't, you know, I, I always say this and I don't mean, I'm not trying to be like, you know, that false humility thing or whatever. Like I know people don't watch my channel because of my playing ability. So the idea of me just hopping on and jamming and expecting anyone to watch that is never going to happen. So yeah, I, I get rid of the guitars, not because I don't like them. Um, just simply because I need to keep them coming in so that I can do more videos about them. And if they, unless they are so unbelievably great that they sort of knock one of my favorites out of the position, they're just, they're going to, they're going to go. What do I think about those mini humbuckers? I like them. This thing has a really sweet uh, neck pickup. Let's see if I can do something pretty. Um <laughs> It is a little bit out of tune. Hold on. Uh, yeah, so it's got it's it's got a really really nice sound. I like this. I think the the middle position. If I roll these back just a little bit, I really like the middle position. It's kind of um, I know people have said this about Firebirds a lot, but it is kind of it's telly ish just beefier. It's like a, a beefier telly to me um, than anything else. It's just like, a, especially in that middle position, like that's 
like my telly, I love that position so much. Um, and this one I think is, it's like right there. It sounds really good. It's just got that more sort of, it's got a bigger sound to it. Fair enough. I'd expect you to either just have them temporarily or have a bus full of unplayed instruments. Yeah. And unplayed instruments make me sad. I, I don't want like this giant room of guitars that I don't play. Uh, that just bums me out. Like I get collecting guitars and if that's people's things, go for it. Um, but for me, I just, I kind of, I see that and I'm like, oh, that's a bummer. They should be, they should be played. That's what they're for. So yeah, I like the mini humbuckers quite a bit. Can you play that tune with B minor, G and A chords? Was it when I was just playing this one? If that's not it, just tell, I don't know, tell me. How about acoustic? How about acoustic guitars in the future? Honestly, I'm new to electric guitars. Um, Acoustic was what I played my whole life. Uh, I would say it was probably like, I mean, I've always loved electric guitars. I just never played them. Um, I would say it's probably like the last four or five years that I got into electric guitar. But for the most part, I've I've only played acoustic guitars. I love them. Um, they don't have the kind of the fascination of exploring a bunch of different ones to me that the that the electrics do, but I, I'm, I love acoustic guitars. Like I feel right at home on acoustic guitar. Electric still feels kind of like a foreign thing to me. So no previously. Oh, maybe it was this one. This is like the E flat. I honestly, I wasn't paying attention to half the stuff I've been playing. So I apologize. I don't know which B minor one you're talking about. Hold on. Let me look. Can you play that tune with B minor G A? Remember, sorry, man. Oh, I use it in some of my my demo. Oh, uh, start picking single strings. Might have been this one. It's hard. I always, um, one of the reasons that I don't like to play for people is because I don't know any songs. Like I know like bits and pieces of some songs and especially on YouTube, if I play someone else's songs, like those companies are so psychopathic about claiming everything that like, I'm kind of paranoid to play any of the songs that I do know, just because it's like, they're going to instantly claim your video. And then the idea that some, you know, suit <laughs> is gonna make money off a video that I made like it drives me nuts so I just I don't do it um, so yeah and so most of most of anything that you hear like occasionally like I'll play like I played um, like Wicked Game I've done some ACDC stuff um, what else I played Satellite a little bit of that in a video I don't remember but just like little bits and pieces in here or there, but everything else I just either make up for that video or I'm just screwing around or noodling or doing whatever because I don't want to get my video claimed. And it's weird when you're on the internet, you know, especially when you're doing something that demonstrates a skill or an ability or whatever, because people really love telling you how much they're better at it than you are. <laughs> so I just kind of, I stay out of it all together for the most part. Have I ever tried the Epiphone Les Paul Special TV Yellow? Nope, I have not. Um, I've heard good things about it. I just haven't uh, got my hands on one. I've played the the SG, these. Um, I mean, I've played Epiphones, you know, before, but I haven't I haven't tried that one. All right, let me pull up. Um, you guys can t kind of tell me what you want. I have. I have things mapped out already. I have a clean tone, like a crunch. And then if you want to get weird and go like, hey, do some like 
really heavy fuzz with like a four second delay <laughs> or whatever. I can do that too. Um, here's, here's the bridge on this one, just clean. <laughs> You know what? I should probably tune this. Phil says, hi, I'm late. That's okay. You didn't miss anything. Like I said, I was just screwing up the live stream at the beginning. Oh, that's a little sharp. You know what's weird is I don't really care if a guitar is out of tune unless it's sharp. For some reason, that to me sounds terrible. If it's a little flat, I just, I don't, it doesn't bother as much. But when something's sharp, I hate it. All right, good enough for government work for what I'm going to do here. It's clean. tuning it wrong because YouTube. Well done. It's uh it's a thing. I gotta, you know, make sure I'm in my place. Know where I stand in the pecking order of YouTube guitarists. Which is fine, because I already know that I'm not good at it, so it doesn't matter. Uh let's see. Here, I'll just turn it up. This is like everything at 10. Which I don't like, to be honest. So this is at about eight. So I'm gonna roll the tone back to about seven. Honestly, the, the trim on this works pretty good. I still don't use it, but whatever. You got a, uh, Phil says he got a, wait, is it the Riviera? The Riviera? I don't know. doesn't matter. Love many humbuckers. I do too. I really, really want a Firebird. I really, I really want a Firebird so bad. Um, these sound great. I like these a lot. I will say about this Crestwood, I hate the controls where they're at. Um, where the, the cable is and then the, the trim system, like just getting to your volume and tone. It's like when you're trying, like forget this, this is not happening ever. Uh, and even getting here, the, the controls on this are a pain in the ass to get to. I don't like it. Especially with the trim out of the way where it belongs. Um, it's right over the volume and tone. No, you can't even get to it. Yeah, it's super crowded. Yeah, it's got a it's got a very sweet sound. Like I love the neck uh, pickup. I think a, a mini humbucker in the neck is Maybe my favorite. I would love to set up my telly with like a mini hum in the neck and then like the classic telly bridge. That would, I think, be just like the ultimate uh, perfect setup. Matthew says, I suppose a bit off topic, but what's your lighting setup like? Uh, looks great. Honestly, a lot of people ask me that. I was really, really surprised. <laughs> um, I, I work in advertising and I film a fair amount of stuff. Um, actually, right before this, I was editing a commercial that I've been working on. Um, so I kind of obsess over that stuff. Like if people knew how much time I spent just like dialing and how all this looks, it's a little OCD. Uh, I get it, but it is kind of my favorite thing. So I have, um, just very briefly, cause most people won't care about this. So I have my camera in front of me right now is a 
Zcam E2 S6. Sometimes I'll use my Fujis. If I do an overhead thing, I'll use Fujis because they're nice and light. Um, and I've got a couple of them right here. Uh, for my light, I have an Aperture 300D, like right here, that's set up with what's called a book light <laughs> so that it looks like a big soft window source, essentially. And then behind me, like right behind me, I have a tube light that's lighting up the, the background. And then you can see in the, the back behind a chair, I have another small tube light set up. So that's how I do it. Uh, Raul says, how is the neck profile compared to a Gibson neck? Um, so you probably missed a little, I'll just repeat it, it doesn't matter. Um, it's kind of like a slightly wider, slim taper. It's not like a 50s thick, thick neck, um, but it's a little bit bigger than like the, the 60s slim taper, but it feels like that. Um, it's a little bit wider version of that. And I will say the, the Crestwood feels, I haven't measured this one. This one feels like a little bit, like a tiny bit of a more rounded C than the Coronet. The Coronet has a little bit flatter shape. If I missed your comment, I apologize. I'm, I'm scrolling through them and I'm, you know, trying to do things here. Is it better if the trem arm is facing backwards? Um, yeah, I, I kind of stick it back either way. Um, I don't, I, it's never here. That's always down or back this way. <laughs> uh, controlling natural light is quite hard too. Um, obviously you don't have to provide it because you've got lights, but a lot of times what people screw up with natural light is that it just ends up looking really flat, um, which is super boring. It's so boring. Um, I mean, I love natural light shooting in natural light. It's just, for me, it's harder to, it's harder to shape. So you get kind of like, I hate this term so much, but that, that cinematic look, um, it's just a little bit harder to, to pull off and make it look nice, but. What do you guys think about the the headstock? So I love this. I, I like I love the old bikini uh, plate on here. I think it's awesome. Some people have been like really like, oh, I hate how it looks, but I think it's great. I think it's it's so classic and I don't know, I think it looks good. Plus my guitar is a whale tail. How cool is that? <laughs> it's the only it's the only time I get to see those these days. Unless I'm on Instagram. Oh, Matthew hates them. That's tragic. They're so nice. Is anybody else watching right now? Do, does anybody else have a YouTube channel? If if you do, by all means, shout it out because we can watch it. Uh, Phil says, I love anything Epiphone can use from its history. I agree. And I, th I like, I mentioned this in the Coronet video, but like, I love the fact that Epiphone is sort of try trying to move out of Gibson shadow a little bit. Like they've done, they've had such a really incredible history. And the idea that they're just kind of like relegated to like, Oh, they're the, the legal Chibson <laughs> essentially, I think has been kind of a, um, a letdown for what the brand itself has done in music history. I think maybe the design isn't the problem, but on mine, it feels cheap. Um, yeah, for sure. I think that's, that's kind of, um, I don't necessarily like, so if people go like, well, what's the difference between like an Epiphone and a Gibson other than the name on the headstock? And I go Ev everything <laughs> like, it's not, it's not that simple. Um, I know people like to say that, um, that's crazy. That's just crazy. I don't necessarily know like what that is, like what, like when you pick something up, why does it just feel premium versus something that feels cheap? Um, and I think that, you know, a big part of it is I love a nitro finish, not for that nonsense about how like it may, lets wood breathe and all this stuff. Like I don't buy into that at all. Um, that has not been my experience whatsoever, but it does feel like tact, like the tactile experience of playing a nitro covered guitar is very different. Um, than playing a poly covered guitar. And so for one right away, like that's a big deal. Um, 
just kind of the way, just the way things feel like if you put this, I think if you put this Crestwood in my lap and had me like just blindfolded me and had me guess like, is it an expensive gar- guitar? Is it a cheap guitar? I think I would have a, a hard time knowing except from the finish. Like I would know immediately I was like, well, it's a poly finish, but you know, a lot of fenders are $2,000 and have poly finishes on them. So it's, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a cheap guitar. Um, but this one has like a, I think that the setup and the finish on this one is a lot better. Like the cornet really does have kind of like these jagged fret ends and that kind of stuff. And this one, like you got to like kind of press in to really feel it. Like the, the overall quality, I would say of this guitar is quite a bit nicer than the cornet. Um, and it's 550 bucks compared to 400. So it should be nicer, but it's also got, you know, the trim system and, and this and that whole thing. So it's, it's different, but it's, you can definitely tell it's, it's a nicer guitar. I always feel like fenders feel cheap when I, I haven't necessarily had that experience, but I do, I was actually going to make a video where, um, I talk about how I think a lot of Gibsons are actually underpriced, which would be a great clickbait title, um, and would spark a lot of rage. People would be mad just because like when I look at, like if I look at say my, my Les Paul special, like the street street price of that is 1599, right? It is a set neck made in America, nitro covered guitar with two pickups controls for each one, a bound neck, like for 1599. Like if you want that in a Telecaster, like it's two grand for Fender. So when people like start flipping out about Gibson prices and that kind of stuff, I go like, I don't think they're overpriced. Les Paul is a different story. Um, and I wouldn't say that it's under or overpriced necessarily. I just think it's a different thing. But like when you tell me that like a bolt on Tele is 2000 and a set neck Gibson is 1599, like I don't really want to go yeah, Gibson sucks over price, all that stuff. I wouldn't want to start ranting and miss comments because these live streams, honestly, they're they're hopefully for you more than, than me. Um, does the Tremotone Vibrato have that problem where one of the strings, usually the high E, pop off out of the slot? I have not um, experienced that, but I can, I can try it. Um, well, I'm not going to turn this on. Usually, I think a, a problem with that is if you're really banging away and you've got this depressed so the strings get a little bit loose. But um, I'm not going to play this very loud, just to the record. But I'll see if I can get it to do it, right? No, nothing moved at all. Super Mike Fun. That's a good name, by the way. <laughs> I should have named my channel Super Mike Fun. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, Anton says, Has, how dare you? Gibson should be more expensive. That's right. I'm not saying that at all. Like, I just think that this whole, I think people just love to complain about Gibson. And, you know, I get it. They've done some not public relations friendly things for sure. I get it. Um, but they're not, they're not what I think a lot of people say. Matt says, I recently got a 60s LP, and it's been amazing to feel the difference between my LP and American Pro Strat. I feel like I can beat the crap out of the Fender. It doesn't feel cheap, just simpler, for sure. A Gibson SG, uh, Liar City. Well, now I can't take anything you say seriously. You've admitted that you're a liar. Uh, he says that, a, well, I don't want to misgender you. <laughs> Liar City says the Gibson SG is an incredible value. I agree, 100%. You should do the Gibson video. I have been saying a similar thing for years. See, Nate and I are on the same page. I just, like I look at, um, I was actually gonna make another video too. I have like this giant list of video ideas that maybe at some point I'll make, but I was gonna do one on like the best, the best, the best American made guitar for the money. Um, and I'm trying to get a hold of the one that I think is that. Um, it's neither Gibson nor Fender, but I do think that Fender is, I think you'd make a way better case that Fenders are overpriced than Gibsons are overpriced, like for sure. But is it still in tune? Let's find out.
Moment of truth. I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> the most expensive thing is just the most clickbait rage inducing title. True. Uh, Liar City, I got a white crest wood in the mail a few days ago. Oh, nice. Oh, your action was super high. So this one's not bad. Um, it's a it's a little high. Like I would want to play slide guitar on this if I knew how to play slide guitar. Um, but because I'm just like an idiot strummer, like I kind of I I prefer a slightly higher action anyway. Um, so this this to me was was completely fine. The coronet I think is a little like the bridge is a little wonky on it. It came. I was actually surprised. Um, Oh, Liar City, it's the name of a podcast I used to do. I'm an honest fella. There are a lot of people who used to have a podcast. I'm one of them. Actually, it's kind of a funny, a funny story. I started this podcast. This was like in 2012, 2013, something like that. A long time ago because I'm old. Um, but I started one. It was called Status Quo Overthrow. And I just interviewed people who kind of like thought a little bit outside the box in their industry. And the first episode I did made the news because I interviewed this police officer who had been involved in um, a death. Like they had, they had tased some guy and I guess the guy had a heart attack and he died. Anyways, he had actually been involved in like a, a real awful situation. And he talked just about like, you know, police and race and, you know, how police respond differently to like rich neighborhoods than poor ones. It was, it was like a really fascinating conversation. And then, um, some someone got a hold of it and it ended up making the news and it was like this whole shit show and he kind of got like in trouble at work and this whole thing anyways i had a couple of them make the news i interviewed a guy who um after 9 11 happened and the airports you know really locked down and they were being like they're like invasively searching people um he stripped naked <laughs> in front of dsa and then of course he got arrested in this whole thing and so i interviewed him and um man i, I miss having a podcast it was fun Can I do a Van Halen style dive bomb? I'm going to go with no, uh, hard no. We'll, we'll give it a shot. Let's try it. Well, let me grab my pick. I don't use picks very often. Um, I don't like them. Not, not Van Halen, but not terrible. Where was the Crestwood made? Is it Chinese? Uh, yes. Handcrafted, in fact, in China. Oh, Jesse says, I bought a 1965 Coronet five years ago for 150 bucks in Wisconsin. Wisconsin is where you get the deals on guitars, apparently. I sold it for 1200 bucks. Are you bummed out now that you don't have it still? I uh, bought a Les Paul Special. Oh, well... I get it. I missed the coronet, so I'll be buying one of the new ones. Oh, Anton says I need more gain. We'll do that. Hold on. Francesco says I prefer the white crest word, right? The white crest wood. Well, fine. Get the white one, man. I do too. Actually, uh, I don't think they were in stock when I ordered this one. <laughs> the label is handcrafted in China, maybe. Yeah, that's probably more handcrafted than this. Uh, Super Mike Fun says, how far can you pull the vibrato up? Hold on, hold on. I don't want this to be too loud because I'm being obnoxious with the vibrato here. About that far, and then things start to pop, so I'm not going to do it. Hey, I mean, that stays in tune better than some guitars I've played. I'll put it that way. Hold on. Let me, um, 
I'm going to do this. I'm going to change the amp. Bear with me for a second. I have to go to my... I was going to actually share my screen with like Logic and Amplitude, but then I just seemed dumb. So hold on. Let me change. Whoop. Uh, more gain. Is that the deal? Is that what people want? Some more gain. I'm going to do the Mesa Boogie. Oh, you can hear it already. muddy to me uh, not horrible I could probably EQ it better but I'm not going to <laughs> flexi that thing up and do some bombs well okay uh, we'll get hold on hold on actually what I will do let me try the I have like, um, I have Amplitube and I have a bunch of different amps, most of which I haven't used to be completely honest, but I do have, there's like a metal head one. There's like a fender and it's kind of intense. So let's see if this works. Hold on. And then, well, hold on. We'll see if this works. Oh, it's a lot of noise. See, I just, I don't like that. Do you guys like that sound? I don't like it. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to boost it a hair. Pull the volume down. Presence up. Oh, you know what? Hold on. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Ah, there we go. I'll do this because honestly, do you really need to see me that much? It's probably not as interesting as this. So this is what I'm looking at. Um, I'm going to turn this down. Actually, I'm going to turn this. I'm going to turn everything off for a second. I don't like that. So I'm not going to do it. Oh, now it is out of tune. Hold on. Hold on. As you can tell, I'm deeply precise with my tuning. I really, really care a lot. What? That doesn't make sense. Okay, well, apparently uh, Logic's on crack right now. What is, what is happening? Do you see this? It's telling me it's C to D sharp to D. Okay, well. Oh, G, come on, G. Close enough for what I do. Okay, let me get out of this. 
correct. It doesn't make sense. All right, anything else? What else do you guys want to know? I've got about 15 minutes, so make it count. Last time people started asking me about like my religious beliefs and stuff, got a little weird. So I'm trying to stick to guitars this time. How much does the Crestwood weigh? I haven't um, put this one on the scale. I would, I would go with uh, my completely subjective opinion. I'm gonna go with this is about eight pounds, probably just over, about eight pounds. It's got some heft to it for sure. Um, it's not the cornet is crazy light. That one I actually did weigh, and it's five pounds thirteen ounces. Uh, it weighs nothing. It's so fun. I like I like how the Crestwood sounds more. Um, the quality that this was created with is nicer, but I would take the coronet. It's just so fun. Uh, Matt says, I've never tried P90s. Are they much noisier than other single coils? Um, yeah, yeah, they get, they get pretty noisy. Um, like I'll do... Like here you can hear it. Like you probably aren't hearing very much of anything right now. But if I plug that one in, hold on, let's do this. I'm going to mute this so that you don't hear me changing it. Mute. Uh, let's see really quick. If I go here... So you can probably hear that. I don't exactly know how much this is coming through, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I use a noise gate on mine, so I just do this. Um, and it's gone. Now it doesn't matter. So yeah, P90s are, are noisy for sure, um, but I don't care because they're amazing. Liar City, your Crestwood is six pounds, four ounces? You're a liar. You know what? I take it back. I think this guitar sounds better and it's more fun. I just like it better. I'm sorry. I just, I love P90s and a single pickup guitar is so much fun. Vico says, thanks, Liar City. You're going to believe a guy whose name is Liar City? Six pounds? Really? That's crazy light. There's no way mine is that light. I would say seven and a half at the very lightest. Um, how's the fretboard neck? Is it comfy for long rhythm playing and chords? Honestly, that's all I do. Um, and yes, it is. I really, I like a 12 inch radius. Um, actually I, I, um, I had an Ernie Ball music man that I love. I love it cause they're all 10 inch radiuses and I love that neck. Like that's the perfect radius for me. Um, their necks are just so thin that I just, I could not deal with it, but I love that. Um, so that nine and a half to 12 for me is kind of my sweet spot. I don't, I don't dislike really flat fingerboards. Um, and the Johnny Marr Jag that I have seven and a quarter, which is great. I don't really care a whole lot necessarily about the fretboard radius, but the nine and a half to 12 is kind of my personal favorite. Um, and this one, it's got a very, you know, it's got a very comfortable neck. I wish it was a little bit thicker, like a more rounded C than it is. But for the most part, I think it's, it's nice. Judy says, nice guitar, that's the one I want. Which one, the Cornet or the, the Crestwood? Sorry, I'm catching up on comments. This one I think is awesome. You can tell, look at how many, all the fingerprints <laughs> that it collects, like it just, it collects them like crazy. There was, um, I, I was gonna do a video. So I, I'm on a handful of like guitar Facebook groups. I don't really post hardly ever. I just kind of lurk. Um, Cause I think they're hilarious. Like some of them are just the worst. They're just the worst. Um, like the moderators, like this is all they have in their life. And so they're just like these little tyrants in their Facebook group. It's so ridiculous. Anyways, I was part of a PRS one and this 
I couldn't, this guy posted about how like he was so mad because he's like, I didn't spend this kind of money for a guitar that like left fingerprints. And I was just, I was dying. I was like, okay, well don't touch it. Just hang it on a wall and don't touch it. And your fingerprint issue is solved. Anyways, I was going to make a video. Um, I kind of wanted to take some of the funnier things I see in guitar forums and Facebook groups and turn them into like skits, like video skits. And that was a hundred percent one where I, I was going to have like, I was going to be a guitar store employee and like the guy calls in and bitches me out because I sold my guitar that doesn't repel fingerprints. Liar City says, if I could post a picture, I would. I believe you. I'm just surprised because mine's very heavy. I'm British and I have no idea what pounds and ounces are. We measure everything in tea and scones. That's good. There was a... um. There's like a meme I saw a while ago. It was hilarious. It said something about how there are two types of countries, those that use the metric system and those that have been to the moon. <laughs> I, was, I died. I started laughing so hard. But I agree. Like the imperial system is doesn't make nearly the kind of sense that the metric system is. But I thought that was hilarious because I'm an American and, you know, I just am. Jesse says, my cornet couldn't have been more than four pounds. It felt like it was going to snap in my hands just because that old mahogany was so dry. Yeah, this one is super light. Like, it's really, really fun. <laughs> Matt says, maybe Liar City is really honest. Like, Greenland is icy and Iceland is green. Maybe. Maybe he named those islands. Anton says, do you plan to build one more parts caster? Yes. Um... Yes. <laughs> so I have, <clears throat> you can kind of see it. It's back in that corner over there. It's like a, it's a uh, Mexican telly um, that I was going to take the neck off and build something. I was going to build like a um, kind of like an offset telly. Like I was just going to get a warmth body and slap it on there um, just to do something fun. And then I also was thinking about doing a strat parts caster, but I haven't totally made up my mind yet. Keith Jr. Long live Keith, just for the record. There's nothing fun with reissue tremolo systems that were wonky as fuck at their best. I see why you dig the simpler model. Yes. I like the black and white better than the red, and it sounds nicer. I agree. Oh, you just, oh, Judy just bought the Crestwood, but I want the Coronet too. Nice. I did the opposite. I bought the Coronet first. Oh, Phil says, you nailed Facebook groups with your comment about making grown men into teenage girls. Yes, it's crazy. It's crazy. Like the amount of, the like for me, I think that the, probably like the biggest limitation or the thing that holds at least me back and probably a lot of you back um, as a guitar player is just the entire idea of preconceived notions and the amount of people who let preconceived notions just rule their life in a way that makes them like hostile, like about totally about like entirely subjective thing. Like the amount of people who get mad because someone top wrapped a bridge. <laughs> like I'm just like, or like when somebody leaves like a mean comment on one of my YouTube videos, I'm like, imagine being that person <laughs> that you voluntarily watch something for free and you got so angry that you took the time to type out a comment. I'm just like, Oh my God, like it blows my mind. And like the number of grown men that just turn into screaming babies. It's just, it blows my mind. It, it's hilarious and kind of sad at the same time. Uh, Fernando says, how do these, how do these guitars feel? I mean, in way of construction, do they feel cheap or rock solid? Um, love your videos, by the way. Thank you. I appreciate that. I don't take compliments well. So I'm just going to ignore that one. Um, they're, um, do they feel cheap or rock solid? Kind of both, if that makes sense. Like, and I don't mean I always compare everything to my Les Paul special or whatever. It's just, it's, it's the thing that I play the most. So that's what I have as a frame of reference to most things. But like when I pick up my Les Paul special, like it is, it is perfect. It is for me, it's the, it's perfect. Um, and when I pick up an Epiphone, I go, 
this is a really nice guitar for the money. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Like it's a phenomenal, it's a phenomenal instrument. I would have zero sadness in owning this guitar and it being my only guitar. Like it's a fantastic guitar, but um, like when I play it, it is, it is not my, my Gibson. So I will say that they're, they're very nice, you know, out of the box. I think I was on a comment thread on one of the videos or something. Someone was asking or talking about like mods that they would do to it. And like this one, I would probably replace the tuners, not because these are bad, but just because I'm kind of OCD about good tuners. Uh, like my, I talked about this before, like my flying V, the tuners are so horrible that I get like annoyed. Um, so I'd replace the tuners. I would definitely have the frets polished and just, you know, have the frets dressed the whole thing because they are very jagged and sharp i would um fix the bridge not maybe not necessarily replace it but it's it's off for sure um and then i would call it good maybe you could replace the pots because you know they shut off like it too they don't have that nice linear roll that the nicer ones do although these are supposedly cts pots but if you did those things like if you spent 400 bucks or whatever it is on this guitar and then you know spent another 150, 200 bucks or whatever, you would have a fantastic, fantastic guitar. Fantastic. Okay, I don't know who this is. Theo Dalem is such a prick on the Telecaster forums, but the mods on the Modern Metal and Progressive Rock Guitars page are the worst humans alive. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm not in those ones. I will say my, the, my favorite one is the Ernie Ball Music Man. Facebook group, totally chill. Everybody's like nice. The mods are not psychos. Um, it's an awesome Facebook group. Uh, I, I like that one. That one's my favorite. Judy says, my 65 coronet is 2.8 kilograms. Wow. So a pound or a kilogram for everybody that wants to know is 2.2 pounds. So multiply by 2.2. Liar City says, I'm wondering how easy it might be to throw soap bar P90s in this Crestwood. Ooh, um, that I don't know. I know you'd like Seymour Duncan. I think it is. They have the Fat Cats. They're P90s that are humbucker sized. But I've honestly never looked up uh, a P90 sized or a mini humbucker sized P90. I don't know. I would imagine you can get one. If you want the P90 in the Crestwood, it's called the Wilshire. Yes. I ordered a Crestwood last week. Completely impressive for 550 bucks. Totally agree. Scott says, hi from Pittsburgh. Hey, welcome. It's a couple people from Pennsylvania. I like Pennsylvania. Um, I haven't spent tons of time. Like I've been to Pittsburgh. I mean, I've been to Pittsburgh. I very brief, like for a day. It was very brief. Um, been to Philly. Um, and then drove through like the north, like the northwest section of Pennsylvania a couple times. Beautiful. Pennsylvania is beautiful. I'd bet my Gibson double cut has sharper fret ends than your Epiphone. <laughs> I had the same issue with the SG I bought last year. Both had quality. Really? Was it the, um, what are they? The, are they, are they specials? Um, the double cuts, they're like 800 bucks or something like that. The, the, the satin finish. Um, I played a couple of those and I like them. Don says, hello, good man. Just joined in. Hello to you too. Welcome. Keith says, damn, I really need to give P90s more time. I almost never use them. People seem to really love them. I, it's my favorite pickup, period. Um, maybe the, the bridge position on a telly is like my favorite, favorite, favorite. Um, but the just, I love P90s. They're so fun. You can, you know, you can roll them back. Like even on this, um, and for everybody who's just joining, I always like to give this disclaimer. I'm not good at guitar. I just really love them. So as I play, keep that in mind. Um, the nice thing about like a P90 is it's it's kind of like a humbucker in that like you can really do a lot with the volume control. Um, and just wait, hold on, let me show you. I'm on the right amp here. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna be on a clean tone amp here. So this is ten. So you can you can get that. It starts to it starts to break up a little bit. You can get it if you really hit it. But if you roll it back, like you can play just like really pretty, um, not pretty necessarily, but just
So you can just, it goes from like sweet and mellow to like that kind of gritty crunch um, all in one. And it's just a volume control. It's, I love them. And to me, I think they do that just so well. Um, I like it. But it's still clear, like like my my Gibson Les Paul, like, you know, you crank it up. It's just like this wall of sound. And it sounds amazing. It's incredible. But I kind of like being able to pick out the notes a little bit more than a humbucker gives me. Let's see. Let's see. Three Card Monty says, P90s are my favorite. They're so responsive. Yeah. Like a fat single coil with clarity, but can rock out. Yeah. Think of the song Mississippi Queen. There you go. Anton says, a tip on Warmoth. Warmoth. I was pronouncing things wrong. I don't know why. Look at the differences between their standard and vintage bodies. Ah. Three Card Monty is high from South Jersey. Best pizza in the world. Well, well. Let's, let's calm down for just a second. I don't know. I've never had pizza there. I know I make, like I make, like I make the dough, like I'm making pizza tonight and I like make the dough. I do the whole thing. It's real good. I've been to Jersey quite a few times too, actually. Mostly Newark, like that area, but I'm trying to think of the last time I was there, but I've never had pizza in New Jersey. I'm clearly missing out. Uh, do you plan on reviewing the new Epiphone casinos that are coming out? We'll see. Um, we'll see if I can get my hands on one. I would love to, for sure. I would love to, but we'll see. Have you tried the Epiphone Wildcat? Nope, I have not. Matt says, gotta go. Laters. Matthew says, all pizza is good pizza, but we can all agree that the best pizza has pineapples on it. I will not say that, but I do enjoy pineapple on my pizza. Um, best pizza outside of Oroville, California, maybe. Oroville, where's that? Sounds really familiar. Where's that at? Oroville, California. Um, what's that town? We call it tomato pie in South Jersey. There's a distinct delineation between North Jersey and South Jersey pizza. Wow, you guys are like serious about your pizza. This is like Civil War type stuff, North versus South pizza. All right. Anyways, there's this town. It's south of um, Eureka. But it was it sound, it was in Oroville. I rode my bike down the West Coast like years ago. Um and I went through this little town. It's on Highway, is it one? It's Highway One or 101? I can't remember. Uh, the creepiest little town. This was like 2011, and I stopped at this diner. 2011, mind you. And I tried to pay with a debit card, and they're like, "What is that?" <laughs> it was crazy. Uh, North Jersey is a dump. Okay. Oh, there's Central Jersey too. Jersey's tiny. It's like I'm from Montana. New Jersey is like the size of a county. Like, how are there this many levels of Jersey? Oh, it's a big weed-growing community. Near Chico, yeah. It, yeah, okay, I know where that's at. So I rode through, like, Eureka. Um, what's the other one called? It's like a college town. I can't remember. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Brendan says, why can't I take my eyes off that Les Hall special? Because you know what is up. That's why. It's the best damn guitar. <sighs> It's real pretty. I love it. I'm going to grab it. Just, I'll finish with that one. Hold on. Let me turn this off. We're getting a geography lesson here as well. You have North Jersey, which is basically New York City, and then South Jersey, which is basically Philly. <laughs> New Jersey is the most densely populated state in the nation. Yeah, uh, I think that's the problem.
Okay. Oh, man. It's, this is the perfect guitar. I just want you to know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not going to play that. I had the pleasure of spending a couple weeks in an apartment in Manhattan. Probably won't have that option again. Best pizza I've had was there. Oh, okay. Maybe there is a thing to New York pizza. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. pretty soon let me um just because hold on tune doesn't matter it's still the greatest guitar ever <clears throat> the pine barrens are just weird again don't know where that's at but the water the water makes for the best crust like do i need to add like pollution to mine like what's the deal i'm kidding i don't mean it crap on jersey the water makes peace okay for your favorite guitar players maybe a bit of jimmy zeppa or rory gallagher i do love i love all of them um I don't play this style of music, but I think my favorite guitarist is Malcolm Young. Just because I could play three chords for like all day, just. Like I love, um, I love chords, like just doing that. And he was like this genius of making simple things so damn fun. And he just stood in the background and just did his thing. Occasionally walked up to the mic, add some background vocals while Angus flipped out and was amazing up front. Um, but to me, like, that's like the dream. Like to just sit at the back of the stage, play your chords, make 40,000 people lose their minds and have the best night of their life and then go home. I think that's it. <laughs> Play free bird. All right. I think that's it. Uh, I think that's all I got for you today. I got to go make my apparently not nearly as good non Jersey pizza. Uh, for whatever reason, I don't, I need to get some of that Jersey water. <laughs> I've never heard that. I've never heard that. That's amazing. Uh, I'm going to bring that up next time I meet somebody from New Jersey. I'm like, Hey, what's in your water, man? Tell me what's in your water. Mm -hmm. Might as well finish with a little Star Wars. You know what I mean? Because I'm a nerd. All right. Uh, toxic Racer Glow Night. As much as I would love to continue to hang out and make fun of Jersey, uh, it feels like punching down. You know what I mean? It feels like it's a little easy to, little easy to do. All right. Um, and let's see. I'm going to, I'll just check just to make sure there's not any less or last second comments. Uh, I was about to buy the new Epiphone Special TV Yellow. Then they revealed the Coronet. I think I'll grab the Coronet. It's an awesome guitar. Like, the Coronet is super fun. 
I haven't played the Epiphone uh, TV special, so TV special, Les Paul special, and TV Yellow. I appreciate it. Uh, hey, one real quick thing before I go. Um, let me shut this off so it's not loud. That's just in my headphones, actually. Uh, if you guys are doing any guitar shopping, um, there's a link in the description below, which you can use to support the channel completely for free. If you buy anything uh, at, at Sweetwater, because I'm a Sweetwater affiliate, um, if you buy anything from there, I get a small percentage of the sale. It costs you absolutely nothing extra. So if you're you know doing your shopping and whatnot, just use that link. I deeply appreciate it because then I can, I don't know, maybe retire on that $3 that I make or whatever it is. Uh, any any money that I get from the channel uh, just goes right back into it for, for guitars and that kind of stuff. So it's kind of just like a fun way to, to keep the hobby rolling, hopefully make stuff that people like. Um, I will say this, I super appreciate everybody that shows up uh, to these. I really appreciate everybody that watches any of my videos. Like I still, um, I just, I feel really grateful that people do that at all. Um, it's I really enjoy doing it and it's really fun that you know, I look at a lot of YouTube channels and some of the comment sections and things like that can get pretty toxic, but this one for, for whatever reason has been just really, really fun. And I appreciate everybody that, um, is a part of it. Honestly, like the only reason this all happens is because people pay attention. Um, and so I, I really appreciate it. Um, let me just make sure that I caught everybody. All right. Again, thank you so much. Um, if there are videos you want me to make, if there's things that you wish I did but don't do, um, please let me know. If there's things that I do that you wish I didn't, I don't want to tell you, man. But uh, you no, know, I'm always up for suggestions for video ideas, that kind of stuff. Again, I only want to make things that hopefully people like and enjoy. Um, I kind of, you know, when I talk about sort of the point of why I do this at all and why I have a channel and that kind of thing, it's just because I love. I love guitar and I just want to help other people really enjoy that experience. Um, and for me, it's really fun. And, um, so again, I'm always open to ideas, suggestions. If people want certain things, I will do my best to make it happen if I can. And, uh, yeah, the guitar form sketch idea would be epic. I'm definitely going to do some of them. I have a few, um, in mind right now. Uh, I have to find a way to pull it off. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to do it for sure. They're fun. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody. Again, I appreciate it. And have a, an awesome Thanksgiving, uh, unless you don't celebrate that because you're in some weird country like the UK or whatever. Uh, but, you know, everybody else, have a great Thanksgiving. Have a good holidays. Um, I'll try to do more of these for sure. And I'll talk to you soon. Laters.